Never before has a female artist managed to take over the globe like Beyonce Knowles. She has won 17 Grammy Awards, sold over 120 million records worldwide as a solo artist, sell out tours and countless honors and industry accolades. Beyonce reached heights even beyond her wildest dreams. She was placed third on VH1's 100 Greatest Women in Music, just behind Alison Krauss and Aretha Franklin. In 2012, she became the most nominated woman in Grammy history. Elia Reid, the great songwriter and producer, said that she's the greatest entertainer on earth right now. Beyonce Knowles has left no stone unturned. Her success ranges from music to business and acting. You know, I've sang before and I wanted to show myself that I can act. Having been nominated for a Golden Globe, she proved herself not only as an accomplished musician and businesswoman, but also a talented actress. Absolutely, Diana Ross was a huge inspiration. I had her posters, all of the movies she's done, all of her music. It's the only thing I listened to the whole time we were filming this movie. She is one of the most influential women in America, befriending several powerful celebrities, including the Obamas. Nothing seems to be able to stop Beyonce reaching new heights of success. You know, Beyonce is not just a star, she's a superstar. But how did the daughter of a hairdresser and a businessman become such a global phenomenon? I just love talent and entertainment, and I want to be a real entertainer. As a singer, songwriter, actress, humanitarian, businesswoman, fashion icon, Everything, in each one of these things, she's so gigantic. She doesn't have to be with Destiny's Child. She doesn't have to be with Jay-Z. She can do it all on her own. We invite you to discover the journey of Beyonce. Fierce and always fabulous. She is worth over $350 million and one of the best-selling artists of all time. Beyonce Knowles has conquered her place in the music industry. With a career spanning over 16 years, she managed not only to stay on top every step of the way, but also setting new trends in music, fashion, and live performances. Beyonce is hailed by the critics as one of the best entertainers in contemporary music. Her onstage persona and incredibly complex performances make her live shows one of the best-selling and most exciting to witness. Married to one of the most important rappers in hip-hop history, Beyonce considers herself to be a modern-day feminist and believes in 50-50 relationships. She is a role model for women all over the globe and personifies what an independent woman is all about. And to know that there are women around the world that don't have a voice, we have to, to use our voices and, and raise the awareness and be a part of something where we can, can leave our legacy and help improve this world. Despite her high-profile marriage, Beyonce was never defined by her private life. She's one of the few artists that is acknowledged by her professional successes rather than her personal scandals. The girl from Texas would grow to become an international sensation. Beyonce Giselle Knowles is the oldest daughter of former Xerox sales manager Matthew Knowles and hair salon owner Tina Knowles. She was born in Houston, Texas on September 4th, 1981. She was named after Tina's maiden name, Beyonce, and has a younger sister, the singer and actress Solange Knowles. She had a really simple childhood. She was singing and dancing to class like a lot of little girls do. Beyonce had an amazing childhood and she had great parents in Matthew Knowles and Tina. And she was, 
Her blood is, is a combination of African, French, and Native American, and that what, that's what accounts for the amazing you know, bone structure that she has and, and her incredible looks. I could say it's that typical Hollywood kid born into parents who fiercely want their children to be pop stars or superstars. I do think family is really, really important. I grew up with both of my parents and with my sister and my cousin and with Kelly and all the girls, and it was always a lot of love in my house. At a very young age, Beyonce started showing signs of her innate talent for music. When her dance instructor started humming a tune, little Beyonce finished it, hitting every high-pitched note. All of a sudden, the dance teacher knew that he had a prodigy on his hand. So they started, you know, giving her more lessons, and she started entering contests. And when she was seven, she entered a singing contest with all the other kids in it who were like 15 and 16 years old, and they were surprised that this little seven-year-old would enter, and she entered and sang one of the most important songs of all time, which is John Lennon's Imagine. Then she won the contest, beat all the other kids in it, and I think this is what started her kind of social consciousness and why she became a great humanitarian was from picking a song like Imagine at seven years old, and that, you know, led to her later life, you know, social activism. Her parents fully supported the development of her talent for music and performance, and enrolled her in Parker Elementary School, a music magnet school in Houston. While attending the school, Beyonce was part of the school choir. And her parents put her in school plays, she was singing in church, so she had a really nice childhood. So it was a double income family and they were comfortable and doing well and they were really happy that their daughter was this you know, amazing singer who was coming up and dancing and getting lessons and you know, they were kind of grooming her to become a great. She was a star in the making. And when it came to her high school years, Beyonce did not leave it to chance. She became part of the St. John's United Methodist Church Choir as a soloist for two years. In 1990, Beyonce, alongside friend Kelly Rowland, met Latavia Robertson while auditioning for an all-girl group called Girls' Time. Kelly Rowland and her mother left her father um, because they were um, victims of domestic abuse. So they moved to Houston, Texas, and that's where they met Beyonce and her family. Kelly, of course, was also singing, so they were interacting a lot in school and in church. And it got to a point that it was just too hard for Kelly's mother to raise her daughter, and she actually gave legal guardianship to Matthew and Tina Knowles, and they raised Kelly as their own. Beyonce and Kelly Rowland met when they were eight years old, and they both were auditioning for the group Girls' Time, along with three other girls. They, you know, from, from the early days, they were very close, and they continued this closeness all through their entire career. When different members changed later on during Destiny's Child, they always were the core member of the group, members of the group, and they were very close right up until 2013, when Kelly did her solo album and Beyonce sang in it with her. So to this day, they're still very close, and that closeness started from they were eight years old. The group, that included the three girls, began performing on the talent show circuit in Houston and started to gather some attention. R&B producer Arne Frager went all the way to Texas to watch the girls perform, and he was impressed with what he saw. He took the girls to his Northern California studio, and after hearing their vocals, he started preparing them for the largest talent show on national TV at the time. And then the highlight of Girls' Time was when they got on Star Search, which was pretty hard to get on. They got on it, and they tried out, and they thought they were going to win. Welcome Beyonce, Lativia, Nina, Nikki, Kelly, and Ashley, the hip-hop rapping Girls' Time. Pretty much anyone, if you know, if you wanted to be, go on to greater same, Star Search was the place. I just need a all about my baby. So say what you want to say. I don't care. It was an exciting moment for the girls. They were given the chance to perform on the same show which had propelled child stars such as Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake into household names. Despite the golden opportunity, Girls' Time failed to impress and lost the competition. So it was very disappointing for all of them. But Beyonce said the reason why they didn't win was not because of lack of talent, it was because they just picked the wrong song to do. The setback 
could have ended Girls' Time's career. What was interesting is one of the producers apparently told Matthew Knowles, you know, it, it's actually a good thing, it's a blessing in disguise, because they go back and they kind of redouble their efforts. Matthew Knowles decided to take matters into his own hands. He took a huge risk by resigning from his well-paid job at Xerox to manage the girls full-time. Matthew, from very, very early on, was convinced that Beyonce could be an international megastar. He gave everything to her career. He totally saw it. And you don't do that. You don't give up every single thing in terms of your own work for your kid unless you believe they have a superior talent. And he managed the group, but you know times were tough because they weren't making a lot of money. They were performing locally in and around the Houston area. So at that point, it became really, really tough. And um, Matthew and Tina Knowles actually separated. Matthew reduced the original lineup to four members containing Kelly Rowland, Beyonce Knowles, Latavia Robertson, and Latoya Luckett. The girls rehearsed in Tina's salon and had their costumes designed and created by Tina Knowles. During the summer, Matthew put the girls on a boot camp regime, giving them vocal and dance lessons. The Knowles household became a star-making machine. He was working like as a sales manager at Xerox and he was getting a good income and his wife you know, had this salon and she was a hairdresser. So he sacrificed in 1995, gave up his job and you know, resigned at Xerox just to manage these girls who weren't generating any money. You know? So he was just kind of dedicating his life to them, kind of like what Joe Jackson did with the Jackson Five, the father, and just built them, built them, worked with them every day, you know, trying to build them into because he realized he had a superstars on the hand, but it just wasn't um, financially lucrative at the time. They started performing as opening acts for other more established R&B girl groups. At the same time, they auditioned before record labels, receiving rejection after rejection after rejection. The family started to feel the enormous pressure, and cracks in the Knowles household started to show. After being rejected by label executives countless times, the girls finally signed a record deal with Elektra Records, moving to Atlanta Records shortly after. This was going to be the big, big break, because what had happened was when Matthew gave up his job, they actually had to get separate apartments, and they were kind of living separate within the family because the finances just weren't there. And so they thought, no, the big break is going to be Elektra. And then when they got dropped from Elektra, it was just a total devastation for the family, and it actually broke up the family. The hardest thing for an artist um, is getting signed in the first place. First of all, you go through that panic of, I really want to get a record deal. And then you think you're never going to get one. And then you get one. Then, if the record doesn't sell well, you get dropped. So you can imagine what Beyonce was going through when suddenly she thought, yes, finally, we've got the record deal. Finally, we've made the record. Actually, we don't want you anymore. The family was on the verge of breaking up. However, Matthew continued his efforts to manage the group. In 1996, the girls finally had the lucky star on their side. After signing a representation deal with Dwayne Wiggins from Grassroots Entertainment, the girls began recording their debut album under an agreement with Sony Music. With the girls' destiny in good hands, the Knowles family managed to reunite and shortly after, the girls signed a record deal with Columbia Records. After all their initial struggle and personal sacrifices, girls' time were on their way to fame. While working on their debut album, the group decided to drop the name Girls' Time. While choosing a new identity, Tina and Matthew Knowles resorted to the Bible, where they found the name Destiny's Child while reading passages from the Book of Isaiah. Matthew adopted the name, and Destiny's Child was born. The group released their self-titled debut album in 1998, scoring their first major hit with the single No, No, No. No, No, No was their big single off of it. it in fact, it did garner them um, a few Soul Train Music Awards. Um, that was probably the one single that really made a splash off the album. So it, it was a decent debut, considered a modest hit. Right out of the box, people could tell that this was something special. The girls were finally being seen as a viable act in the music industry, with moderate sales and going on to win three Soul Train Lady of Soul Awards. The following year, Destiny's Child released their second album, 
the writings on the wall. This record features some of the group's biggest successes like Bills, 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 Jumpin' Jumpin' and Say My Name. Ready's on the Wall was not a progression, no. Now you're talking about the adult Destiny's Child. We're no longer little girls. Now we're gonna like show the world the powerful force that we are. So the production and the songwriting and everything, it was a different level to the first album. And they were basically just showing the world we're ready for you now. The Writings on the Wall was was sort of their, was their, was their breakthrough album. It, it sold millions and millions of copies. The last album we were just starting out and we were trying to find what we were gonna go for, what our style was and who we were gonna work with. But this album, we were sure of who we were gonna work with. Biz Biz Biz, a very unusual song. The instrumentation on it, the production, the way the keyboards sound and everything on it. Amazing song, and then the video. I really loved how Beyonce flashed back to her childhood because her mom had a hairdressing salon, so the video takes place in a hairdressing salon. At first we started out real cool Taking me places I ain't never been But now you're getting comfortable Ain't doing those things you did no more You're slowly making me pay for things Your money should be handling So it just was kind of a reincarnating her childhood and, and creating a whole vibe with it unusual production and everything on the song that was saying, this is now where we are. We're not talking to all guys, we're only talking to the one guy yes. that is being trifling and is running up her phone bill and all of that. So if the guy wasn't doing that, we would never ask a guy to pay our bills. We believe in 50-50 relationships. Right. But we also know that guys can relate to yes. this situation too, yes. because we know there are some girls out there that take guys' cars and yes. drive them and feel like they can spend Go their credit bigger. cards. You know, Bills, Bills, Bills was so popular. It spawned, you know, like rival rap tracks and kind of like, it, it just was everything, you know. And it was interesting because it said a lot about kind of w the tone that Beyonce's career would take. From a pretty early age, she kind of took a, a very active role in producing. She didn't make beats, but she would kind of come up with the ideas and kind of write the melodies, which was which was a distinct contrast with most of her peers at the time who were, you know, these kind of prefab, you know, pop stars, you know, a group like NSYNC wasn't writing their own songs, really. The album is more conceptual this time. Beyonce produced a majority of the vocals on the album. And if you notice, when you listen to the album, that the vocals are more in your face this time and mm -hmm. it's tight and it's all because Beyonce hooked it up. The multi-platinum album catapulted the group into international stardom. However, Despite their success, the group were on the verge of breaking up. So it was at this point that massive tension started developing in the band. The other members of the group you know, complained that Matthew Knowles favored uh, Beyonce and Kelly Rowland. Uh, Kelly Rowland had been living with the family for a time and she, they were sort of parental figures for her. Essentially, Beyonce and Kelly Rowland were the two chosen members by Matthew. They were the two that had a future in the band and he wanted the other two out. Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robertson became unhappy with the way Matthew was managing the band, favoring Beyonce and Kelly. Matthew dropped the two girls before shooting the music video for Say My Name and brought in Farrah Franklin and Michelle Williams as their replacements. What happened is that for the Say My Name video, he actually brought in two other girls, Michelle Williams, who we all know now, and Farrah Franklin, to be in the video, even though at this point they weren't official members of the band and they hadn't even recorded that song. Say My Name was the big, huge hit out of that album. It garnered them a Grammy Award, which I think this was really where they made their splash and you start going, I know exactly who Destiny's Child is. And they also started finding out who they are, their sound was established, their look was established, and Beyonce was a star. Despite not having recorded the tracks, Franklin and Williams recorded the music video for Say My Name and Jumpin' Jumpin'. This incident propelled LaToya and Latavia to initiate a legal battle against Matthew, Beyonce, and Kelly Rowland. It's really hard. I mean, a lot of groups break up because of ego. And I think it was because of ego, because anybody who would be in a group would 
amazing talent like Beyonce and Kelly Rowland, it's hard to really, you know, face and know that maybe you're not as talented as these people. And so it just created a lot of, you know, sort of friction. They, I think they were just unhappy that they weren't getting the features or I don't know if you know, the songwriting credits, production credits, whatever that they want. Beyonce fell into depression after being blamed for the split by the media and music critics. At the same time, the relationship between Beyonce and her long-term boyfriend ended. The ugly side of fame was breaking her apart. She just locked herself away in her room and wouldn't eat and all that, and it took her mom to really kind of coerce her out of it and bring her back because she just felt betrayed that these were her best friends, you know, and they were singing together and they came up together, and then all of a sudden they would just leave her stranded, you know, in the middle of things. So I think it really hurt her, but afterwards I think she realized that you know, it was just ego, it was just jealousy why they left. It was terrible, actually. It was a terrible time for Beyonce. Her longtime boyfriend left her. Um, also, she fell into deep depression because everyone on the internet, fans, blogs, everyone was blaming her for the exit of the two girls. They said she wanted to be the star. It's that classic Diana Ross thing, like, who's going to be the star in the group? And it was Beyonce, and they felt like Matthew looked out for her interests and not the rest of the group. And Beyonce didn't leave her room a lot. She didn't um, eat. She wasn't like exercising, doing anything. And she was kind of embarrassed by all of this because she's like, we've won a Grammy award and I'm in a deep depression. And that lasted almost two years. Despite her personal struggles, Destiny's Child won their first Grammy award for best R&B song and best R&B performance by a duo or group with vocals. The lawsuit was eventually settled and Latavia and LaToya dropped the lawsuit against Beyonce and Kelly, but maintained the legal battle against former manager Matthew Knowles. But Destiny's Child could not yet enjoy their success. Five months after joining the group, Farrah Franklin left. So four became three at this point, and for the first time, the world and the showbiz world really realized that Matthew could actually be very, very ruthless because all of a sudden, three Destiny's Child girls were gone. And it also became clear at this point that this was Beyonce's band. She was the star, and everyone else was potentially disposable. In only six months, the group had three girls dropped, and four, became three, Michelle Williams, Kelly Rowland, and Beyonce Knowles. What happened next was music history. The girls recorded Independent Women Part One, which became part of the soundtrack for the film Charlie's Angels. Yeah, well, Charlie's Angels was obviously a, a monster hit. I think at that moment, they went from being a superstar band to a megastar band because Independent Woman was an anthem, and it was an anthem for that era. It's an interesting thing if you want to like frame it in terms of her career because she was on the verge of going solo shortly thereafter. So it almost it, it almost like operated as a manifesto for her, but you know, simultaneously it also could operate as a manifesto for any woman that kind of you know wanted independence. So that kind of took her career into the stratosphere. <laughs> became their best charting single, staying on top of the US Billboard Hot 100 chart for 11 consecutive weeks. I think we've had an almost perfect year in 2000. I mean, right now we have number one single, Independent Women, for six weeks. We broke so many records. We had uh, Say My Name, it went number one. Bills, Bills, Bills went number one. Everything we put out went number one. They finished recording their third studio album, Survivor, and released it in May 2001. Without surprise, the album debuted at number one on the US Billboard 200. Survivor was huge. It was released in May 2001. It debuted number one on the Billboard music charts. It sold over 660,000 units in the very first week, which is so impressive. Just lifted Destiny's Child into another stratosphere with, I mean, amazing songs on it, like the actual Survivor song. And the video for that song was like one of the best videos of all time at that time when it came out. It's them on, in Fiji, on an island, deserted island, and Darren Grant was the director. And just the whole vibe that they created with them kind of 
washing up on shore and they had all these kind of rags, wearing these rags. So it was, you know, they kind of looked very, you know, kind of lost. And then they're in the jungle. So then, they, and from that, then they find this temple and they're dancing in front of the temple. But it had this kind of a exotic sexuality to it that showed them. And, and they were not only talking about survivors in the music business, they were talking about survivors from relationships and that they had been, you know, all the stuff that they'd been through within the band. I'm a is that Survivor was one of the biggest um, songs off of that album, as well as Bootylicious, which a lot of people remember. From this album came major hits such as Survivor and Bootylicious. Destiny's Child were releasing hit after hit after hit. They were dominating the world. At the peak of their success, and after all the legal battles and internal conflicts, the girls decided to take a break from the group pursue their solo careers. After having starred in an MTV movie, Beyonce was offered the part of Foxy Cleopatra in the Mike Myers comedy Austin Powers in Goldmember. The film was a commercial success and opened Beyonce's appetite for more acting. I think Beyonce is the ultimate Bond girl. She should have been in a Bond movie, but I don't know why they didn't ask her. So of course they asked her in Austin Powers, which was Bond spoof, which was Goldmember. She did an amazing job and she basically got to cut her comedy chops, you know? And she's really funny in it and, and has a kind of a, you know, wink in her eye. And, you know, I think she just had an incredible time doing something that would be, you know, because normally people thought that she was so serious because her music is so serious, you know? And to see that kind of comedic side of her, I think it kind of just opened up her mind and opened up the world to see that she was a, she's a very funny girl. Beyonce's first solo recording was alongside Jay-Z on 03 Bonnie and Clyde. The track peaked at number four in the charts. Her first solo album, Dangerously in Love, was released in the summer of 2003, and only after the other two Destiny's Girls had released their solo albums. The album debuted at the top of the charts. I don't think Beyonce actually planned to be a solo artist, but when you're that incredibly talented, it's kind of like the Beatles, you know? I mean, how can you keep John Lennon and Paul McCartney locked up in one band? I mean, Kelly Rowland and Beyonce just had so much talent that eventually they would have to go off on their own. The little girl from Texas who spent her entire life being groomed for fame and fortune was now an international solo star. She had achieved more than she could imagine, but it wouldn't stop there. Dangerously in Love and the whole album just showed that she's now independent, she's like fierce, she's like, you know, gonna show that she can do it on her own, her power, not only in her voice, but in her songwriting. And of course, that the album entered the charts at number one. Later, she went on to be the first woman in history to have all five of her albums enter the charts at number one. No other woman has done that. So if that doesn't show you that she's one of the greatest artists in history, then nothing will. The singles Crazy in Love and Baby Boy became worldwide number one hits, and other tracks like Me, Myself and I and Naughty Girl reached the top five. Her debut solo album also received a record five Grammys in one night a record only broken by Adele in 2012. All the work and personal sacrifices that the Knowles family unit had to make were finally paying off. And they were doing it in style. After huge solo success, Beyonce was planning on releasing a follow-up album containing several unused tracks. However, she decided to focus her efforts in the production of Destiny's Child's last studio album, Destiny Fulfilled. 
The group agreed that they were all ready to work on their own solo albums, and they gave a hint that this was their last album because it was called Destiny Fulfilled. They came back to do another Destiny Child album, Destiny Fulfilled. It was number two on Billboard, and the single from it was top five. So huge success again. I mean, they have such a, a power and such a force, and they still have that huge following and name that anything they do is going to be hugely successful. We've waited for this. We told the fans years ago that we would do solo projects and that we will come back out together in 2004, and here we are. The album included the singles Lose My Breath and Soldier. Both reached the top five of the Billboard chart. The group embarked on a worldwide concert tour called Destiny Fulfilled and Lovin' It. And during the last stop of their European tour in Barcelona on June 2005, Kelly Rowland announced to the fans that the group would disband at the end of the North American leg of the tour. I think when Destiny's Fulfilled came out, Beyonce felt that she should give the band one more go. She didn't want her fans to think that she'd turned her back on Destiny's Child. Although for everyone in the music industry, it was pretty obvious at this point that this was their swan song and that they would all go their separate ways. The interesting thing is though, when Kelly announced it, fans started to think, is Kelly the reason that the band is breaking up? And that made a lot of people really, really upset because people loved Destiny's Child. The ladies wanted to go out on top, which is exactly what they did. They did a final tour, they did a final album, and they've done a few reunion concerts here and there um, ever since. After the disbandment of Destiny's Child, Beyonce returned to focus on her solo career and recorded B-Day. Her second solo album was released to coincide with her 25th birthday in September 2006. Again, it debuted at the top of the Billboard 200. The album contained another collaboration with Jay-Z, and it just so happened they were dating at the time. Um, it's been rumors about all types of crazy things since I was 15. That's just a part of being a celebrity, so I deal with it. I'm not, it doesn't make me upset or... It doesn't make me feel anything. It's just a part of my life. <laughs> yes, it's just a rumor. Everyone was talking about it because no one was quite sure if they were sort of together at that time. And it, and it was just, you know, it was, are they? Are they? You know, it's like, is it real? Are they really together? Is it business or what? It was kind of the early stages. A lot of people think that it started in 2003 with their 03 Bonnie and Clyde song when they collaborated. But the truth is, Jay-Z met Beyonce back in 1997 when she was just starting out with Destiny's Child. He heard her, they were working um, in the same area, and he heard her wailing a Wyclef Jean song, and he was like, this girl is good. And then she started rapping, and he was even more impressed. So for them, it was a professional relationship, and then it built upon a friendship before they ever got involved romantically. The second single of the album was a huge commercial success. Irreplaceable hit the top spot of the charts all around the world. Irreplaceable, one of my favorite songs. I mean, written by Neo. I think Beyonce contributed as well to it. But just the whole vibe of it is kind of the same story as the Bills, Bills, Bills from the Destiny's Child of this guy. And he's just kind of taking advantage of the girl. And the girl is kind of saying, you know, to the left, time to leave. To the left, to the left. Everything you own in the box to the left. In the closet, that's my stuff. Yes, if I bought it, please don't touch and keep talking that mess. That's fine. Could you walk and talk at the same time? Man, it's my name that's on that tag. So go move your back, let me call you a cab. Standing in the front yard, telling me how I'm such a fool. Talking about how I'll never ever find a man like you. You got me to stay. And so the video is amazing, the song is amazing, and the way it, the production and everything on it is so unusual. I never thought that a song that unusual would get to number one. And of course it was number one for her because the person singing was so amazing that it just lifted the song to another level and, and, and took her into superstardom. She would take another acting role in 2006, starring alongside Steve Martin in The Pink Panther. The film grossed over $158 million. Despite the commercial success of the film, Beyoncé would take another role that would grant her more recognition for her acting work. Dream Girls would be a critical and commercial success. Her participation in the film alongside Eddie Murphy and Jamie Foxx got her a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress.
I definitely was out of my comfort zone. I was terrified, I was scared, nervous, a little insecure, and um, I just said, you know, I have this opportunity, and I can feel it in my gut that I'm here for a reason, and I'm gonna work as hard as I can, and like I said, the hard work paid off. She was playing obviously a Diana Ross like figure and you know it was it was the obvious that the coincidence wasn't lost they cast her because she kind of occupied a similar space in, in, in culture as this kind of you know larger than life diva. Absolutely Diana Ross was a huge inspiration. I had her posters, all of the movies she's done, all of her music. It's the only thing I listened to the whole time we were filming this movie. What this gave Beyonce for the first time was real credibility, not just in the music industry, but also in Hollywood. And that's really important because the real megastars of our times, the Bette Midlers, the Madonnas, the Barbra Streisands, they all have credibility in the music industry, but also in Hollywood as well. There were other pop stars that tried to do movies. I mean, obviously Britney Spears had Crossroads. I don't think anyone was really offering Christina Aguilera that many film roles. Jessica Simpson obviously wasn't gonna carry a, a film but Beyonce was able to kind of transcend that. I feel great, but more than the, the big success, I just feel good that um, I know now that if I work hard enough that I can, I am an actor. She released the song Listen as part of the original soundtrack for the movie, which got her two awards for Best Song and Best Original Soundtrack from the Broadcast Film Critics Association Awards 2006. She was on top of the world. Multi-Grammy Award winner, millions of record sales, international success, and now a world-renowned actress. Beyonce Knowles was a fierce force to be reckoned with, not only in music, but also in film. Her relationship with Jay-Z was blooming, and it came as no surprise that the couple decided to tie the knot. We're talking about two of the greats, and to see them actually get together and create this, you know, the most powerful couple in showbiz was really magic to watch, watch them, you know, over the, the time and watch them build up to eventually getting married. And I remember one scene where they were together for a very long time and they were, Jay-Z was on a red carpet and the guy said to him, when are you going to marry her, the interviewer? And Jay-Z just shot him this steely look and was just like, young man, mind your own business, you know? But if looks could kill, that would have killed the guy because he was like, that's none of your business. But they, they were just building the relationship, getting stronger and stronger, working together on music, and to have these two great forces, because one of them is, you know, one of the most powerful forces in R&B, one of them is the most powerful forces in hip hop. And when you combine both of them together, you just get this powerhouse couple that just like took over the world. On April 2008, the former Destiny's Child member and the hip hop mogul got married in a private celebration. A video montage of their wedding was released at a listening party of Beyonce's third studio album, I Am Sasha Fierce, in Manhattan's Sony Club on October 2008. The album marked a turning point in her style and revealed a more creative and in control Beyonce. Yeah, Sasha Fierce was basically Beyonce saying, no, I'm not only independent, but I'm becoming a powerhouse on my own. And so I'm gonna try stuff a little bit different. And it didn't, didn't sound like the other albums. It had a more fresh sound. It had a little bit more hip hop. Now it kind of has the Jay-Z influence in it. And she's like, just taking it to another level. And, and of course, huge success. Entered the charts at number one as well, along with her five albums that all entered the, the Billboard charts at number one, which no other woman has ever done. She introduced her alter ego, Sasha Fierce, to the world. I'm really calm and shy and just, you know, kind of, I just observe, and I'm completely opposite of how I am on the stage. Um, when I get on the stage, I have no idea what's in my head. It's just performing, and I don't even remember what goes through my head because I turn into this crazy wild woman. <laughs> Once again, the album debuted at number one on the charts and gave the world one of the most recognizable songs in her repertoire. Single Ladies put a ring on it. Another classic song, a phenomenon, and the video for it kind of became a dance craze. Everybody was spoofing it around Saturday Night Live. Everybody was like, you know, trying to trying to copy it because it had just created this kind of, across the world, everybody was just studying it. And one, I think one of the most kind of outrageous, you know, videos ever that just kind of, you know, managed to capture, capture a moment in time for everybody. And so, of course, it was a number one song and just did great for her.
The music video was hailed as one of the best music videos of the decade, and it took the world by storm. The video has been imitated by millions of people all over the globe, and its choreography became heavily parodied. Which just became so huge because it was, it was more than a music video, it was a phenomenon. Her third album and the video for Single Ladies gave Beyoncé more awards and accolades than she could ever have dreamed of. The album made Beyoncé one of the top paid performers on earth, topping Madonna and Celine Dion. In 2009, Beyoncé was nominated for nine awards at the MTV VMAs, including nominations for Video of the Year, which she won, and Best Female Video. Another nominee for this category was Taylor Swift with the video, You Belong to Me. Swift managed to scoop the award and to everyone's incredulity, Kanye West invaded the stage and declared that Beyonce should have won the award. So when Beyonce did the single ladies video, it was gigantic. Like I said, it created a whole movement around the world and it won the MTV Awards Europe. So everybody was sure that it was gonna win the MTV Awards in America, which is a big one. So Beyonce is there and of course Kanye West is there and Kanye West saw the video and loved it so he was sure Beyonce was going to win. So it just shows the kind of power of Beyonce that she kind of hypnotized Kanye West that he's sitting there waiting to hear the name Beyonce when they announce the video and all of a sudden when they say Taylor Swift, he's so hypnotized he just freaks out and just storms the stage and just says to Taylor Swift, no, 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 Beyonce has a better video than you, you know. Yo, Taylor. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. So that was, that was really shocking, but I don't even think he was responsible for his actions because he was just so hypnotized by Beyonce and that great video. So then when Beyonce came on a little bit later to get her award, she kind of was very, very classy and, and just kind of said, no, you know, that, that was wrong, you know, Taylor Swift deserves it and, you know, and, and I still got other awards, so it doesn't really matter. And she's already got the award for, for MTV Europe and a lot of other awards for that video, so, it, you know, it was really necessary. But, you know, Kanye is kind of out there, but, you know, who knows, it's, it's hard to resist the, the, the power of Beyonce. His previous tantrums, I've been, oh, he's kind of misunderstood. He's a little egotistical, but last night, just jumping in front of Taylor Swift and, you know, taking, stealing her moment, that was ridiculous. The moment made headlines for days after the event and even forced Kanye West to leave the United States due to all the negative press that came his way. Despite the controversy, Beyonce was flying high and with no brakes to stop her. She continued to land roles in film and starred alongside Oscar winner Adrian Brody in the movie Cadillac Records. Once again, Beyonce's performance gathered some good reviews from the critics and made her star shine even brighter. The hardest thing, probably the emotional scenes. Every day I would come home with swollen eyes and um, having to, to think about the most painful things that have happened to me in my life, um, just so I can give an honest performance. It was difficult because I'm, I'm not a person that dwells on negativity. And it was hard, but you know, it was necessary and I think I, I gave the best performance of my life. In the 52nd Annual Grammy Awards, she was nominated for 10 awards, a record that tied her with Lauryn Hill for most Grammy nominations in a single night. Once again, at the peak of her solo career, Beyonce announced she was going to take a break, this time to focus on her personal life. That while I was on, um, on my vacation, I told everyone, please let me be. Don't ask me to do anything. Don't don't call me, let me go away and relax and get my mind back and kind of come back to my body. Beyonce dedicated her time to looking inwards and settling a few personal battles she had to deal with. In 2009, her father and manager, Matthew, had an affair with actress Alexandra Wright, who was expecting his child. Beyonce's mother, Tina, filed for divorce and a marriage that lasted over 30 years was over. This was a major blow for Beyonce. 
the strong family unit that had turned Kelly Rowland and Beyonce Knowles into superstars was now destroyed. Shortly after, Beyonce fired Matthew as her manager and started seeking her professional independence. For the first time in Beyonce's life, she was doing it alone. And when she returned to the limelight, she did it with a bang. During the 2011 MTV Video Music Awards, she announced to the world that she was expecting her first child in true Beyonce style. I feel like that would be a great job. I want to tuck my kids in to, to bed and drop them off at school and, you know, go do my show for two hours and go back home every day. I feel like that's really stable. Blue Ivy Carter was born January 2012 in New York. Yeah, I think the whole maternal thing just opened up Beyonce to another world where she was now, you know, caring for this little one. And so her songwriting started to channel into that direction, you know, now she had a little one to look after. But it didn't really, I mean, affect her career at all, because five months later she was performing in Atlantic City, you know, taking, taking Blue Eyes with her. And so it was, um, you know, it just, it just opened up her mind to a whole nother world of, you know, thinking about kids, thinking about marriage and you know it, 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 it I think it expanded her mind and expanded her music to a whole different level where on her five albums she has a song Blue but the little girl is featured in it and actually Blue Ivy is the first youngest person ever to be on a number one song and I think she's gonna be you know with two parents like that I think in 2033 she's gonna be like a mogul and a superstar. Despite being her first child it wasn't the first time Beyonce got pregnant. Just a year before, Beyonce found out she was pregnant. After a few weeks, she flew to New York for a scan. Unfortunately, Beyonce suffered a miscarriage. Beyonce used her music as therapy and involved herself in work. In 2013, she performed at the second inauguration of President Obama and the Super Bowl halftime show. This performance won her the Emmy for Best Outstanding Light Design. You can't get any higher than actually performing at the White House for the President and the First Lady, considering that Beyonce is the First Lady of Music. You know, it was cool that she's performing for the First Lady of America. And, you know, her and Jay-Z are kind of the, the, the President and the First Lady, so it's the equivalent of the, the President and the First Lady singing for the other President and First Lady. And it just kind of um, showed the world that she's like a serious artist, you know, that she's, there's no boundaries, that she can play in the White House, or she can play in the tiniest little club, you know, and her friendship with Obama, because, you know, helping him during the election, during both elections and all that, she shows you know, how socially conscious she is and that she's um, ready for anything. Alongside being a devoted mother, Beyonce also embarked on the Mrs. Carter Show World Tour. This was a huge tour. This was the most popular female tour last year, and it was Beyonce's most successful tour that she's ever done. And it shows that she can headline a show, she can do stadiums, she can do whatever she wants, and people will spend the money and buy the tickets to go and see her. She doesn't have to be with Destiny's Child. She doesn't have to be with Jay-Z. She can do it all on her own. In December 2013, she did something that was considered revolutionary. Without any announcement nor any previous promotion, Beyonce released her fifth studio album, Beyonce, on iTunes. Every track had a music video and sold nearly one million digital copies in three days. For me, I think that Beyonce is limitless. I mean, recently she just debuted a, an album that no one even knew about. In the middle of December, on a Thursday night, she thought, I've got a bunch of songs to release. So 14 songs, 17 videos, independently produced. She dropped it all, surprised us all, crashed iTunes. When you're able to do that as an artist, you're amazing and you can get anything greenlit, whether it's film, whether she wants to do Broadway, whether she wants to do another album, the sky's the limit. The album has darker themes and is a reinvention of her style. This is kind of interesting. It's a follow-up to Crazy in Love, which is a really fun way a lot of us got introduced to their relationship. But this one takes it a, a step further. It's very sexy. It's about female sexuality. It talks about their relationship, places where they've had sex, including drunk in the kitchen. I mean, who doesn't have drunken sex in the kitchen? Clearly, Jay-Z and Beyonce. And the video's great, all done in black and white, so it gives you kind of a, a very interesting mood of what happens in their relationship.
Beyonce Knowles has had a successful career. She's building a great family life and managed to stay on top of her game every step of the way. Not only is she an accomplished singer, she's also an award-winning actress and a successful businesswoman. In 2005, Beyonce and her mother Tina opened a clothing range, the House of Darien, that is experiencing commercial success all over the world. You know, obviously music and, and fashion, are they go hand in hand. Um, and her mother, you know, was, was sewed their costumes from an early age. So I think Beyonce obviously developed a very early appreciation for for clothing. Keep in mind, she's also married to somebody like Jay-Z, who's a fashion mogul in, in his own right with Rockaware. I love House of Darion because, um, for one, it's a collaboration with my mother and it celebrates three generations. It's my grandmother, my mother, and myself. And my mother's my stylist. She pulls all the clothes with Ty Hunter, my other stylist. And it's great working with her. For one, she's my best friend and I admire her. And if I could be like anyone, it'd be her. Cause she's just a, such a strong, smart, beautiful woman. Beyonce and her husband, Jay-Z, are the first music industry couple to have a combined net worth of over $1 billion and are the fourth most powerful couple on the planet, according to Forbes magazine. But all of this success wasn't easy, and Beyonce had to fight for it every step of the way. When I went with her to South Africa with Bono and um, Dave Stewart from The Eurythmics, we did a big show for Nelson Mandela called 4664 concert for his charity. And Dave Stewart had produced some tracks with her. And Dave Stewart who produced the Eurythmics, Mick Jagger, people like Stevie Nicks, and a lot of great artists, including Annie Lennox and Aretha Franklin, some of the greatest voices ever. Dave said the greatest female voice he's ever worked with was Beyonce. Because he said when she's warming up, she's doing some kind of Arabic and some kind of pentatonic scales, stuff that he's never heard before. And it's just this absolutely brilliant voice. So just as a singer, she could have just been a singer and nothing else, and still been very important. She's not only a celebrity, she's also a role model for millions of women all over the globe. I describe her um, as incredibly grounded and very, very religious. I feel like God has given me the gifts, every gift that I have, every blessing that I have. And I feel like he puts certain people in my life for a reason, certain angels, certain people protecting me, things that happen to, to everyone. There's no way you cannot believe that someone isn't looking out for you. And he takes people out of my life that shouldn't be there. And I just feel protected all the time. You're talking about someone who's been groomed to do this. So you do get the impression with her as well that as much as she's very polite and everything else, that you don't really get to know her. That's what's interesting, is that she's learned how to be the star that she needs to be at that time, but you still aren't getting who she really is, because she has to do that to protect her privacy. But she does it in such a nice way that if you're an outsider, you would never know that. Just to see this kind of multi-dimensional, multi-faceted artist becoming this powerhouse, and at the same time being one of the most humble people you've ever met. She's so humble, so sweet. She's always, you know, just never any attitude, never thing. Just like it's, I think of all the artists I've met in my life, and I've been lucky enough to meet all of the Jaggers and the, you know, McCartneys and the Bonos and everybody. I've never met anybody that talented, that humble. She's so sweet at all times, so no attitude at all. Beyonce is someone to, to definitely watch because she's someone that is setting trends. She's not someone that's following trends. And I think in the entertainment business and being able to stand out in the music industry, that says a lot in 2014. Yeah, I see the future of Beyonce going from strength to strength. Like how people say that, you know, she is the female Michael Jackson, who was her idol. I think 10 or 20 years from now, she's going to be, people are going to be saying that Michael Jackson is a male Beyonce. one of the greatest artists in history, and I think she's just going to go from strength to strength, you know, selling 118 million solo records and 60 million records with Destiny's Child. I mean, that's just the beginning. I think she's just going to go on to become one of the biggest stars in history. Fierce, fabulous, and talented, Beyonce keeps aiming higher, and nothing can stop her. Oh,
Sunstone.